this series that we're in is Tell Me Something Good. And so there are something good today. Uh, I want you to go to Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. Uh, that's where we're going to get our text today. Man, I love it when all the heads go down. That means Bibles are being turned. Those of you who are still looking at me, I'm wondering where your Bible's at. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. Uh, um, uh, get out your notebook. Uh, take one of those little pieces of paper in front of you and a piece of pen. We uh, or, and a pen. We, we, uh, uh, we take good notes here at this church because we take what God is saying to us seriously. And until you take what he's saying to you seriously, it's going to be pretty hard for him to take what you say seriously. And so we encourage taking notes. We encourage uh, giving God praise out loud. Uh, if, if something is good, say amen. amen. All right. Don't, 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 don't be quiet on me. Uh, we, we, we ought to say what we, what the goodness, uh, right in our life. And so I want to continue this series. We started a couple weeks ago and I, I talked to you about the seven words of praise in the Bible and, and how God depicts that through the Hebrew language and how we give God praise. And how we just thank God from a place of gratitude and a place of thanksgiving. And all of those words of praise are actually tied with an action and our word thanksgiving. So to actually be thankful for God, you actually have to praise God. And all seven of those words require a physical response. None of them require standing and sitting still. All of them require something. And so when you, when, when you talk about, oh, I can praise God in my own way with my hands in my pockets, standing still staring at you. No, you can't. It, you cannot do that. It's, it's exact, the exact opposite uh, to praise God. You have to do something. You have to show unspoken love is not love at all. Uh, unspoken affirmation is not affirmation. You have to speak it. Somebody say, say it. And, and so I want to show you through this passage of Scripture today three points we're going to walk away with today. So I'm going to actually give you the points ahead of time so you're not trying to figure them out. And then that way you're going to space it out in your notes, and I'm going to give you some things to write down in between. So the first one is the shout. The second one is the show. And the third one is the song. So the first one is the shout. Give yourself some space. The second one is the show. And then the third one is the song. And so when we look at this text, I want you to go right in here with me. It says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. Somebody say afar off. And they lifted up their voices, the shout, here it is, their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And so they cried out for mercy. They let a shout come from them. And, and let me just first, before we talk about the shout, let me talk about their circumstance. Their situation uh, is they are lepers. And most of us think we know what leprosy is. And yet at this time in this era, uh, you may not fully comprehend it. Leprosy does have a portion, a small portion of a flesh-eating disease that describes those who were designated in that category. But it was actually a very small portion of people who actually had a flesh-eating disease. And the majority of lepers in that day actually dealt with a deadening of the nerves. And so when they'd have a, a, a nerve damage or anything in their body that they couldn't feel anymore, in that barbaric age, there wasn't very good uh, medicine and practices that we now have today. So one one of the practices was cut until you feel. And so they would literally cut out the wound or cut an area until you could gouge it out enough to where you could feel something or you think you got it out. Well, that's a lot of damage. And so then they would wrap it up and now you're a poor person bleeding on the street and that wound is not getting taken care of. So then it gets infected. It gets gangrenous. It gets smelly. It gets diseased. It gets, and then out now it starts to spread. And since you can't feel it, I'm going to be a little gross, but we're going to get there and I'll show you the point. When you, when, when it's diseased and you're sleeping on the dirt in the desert, rats begin to eat. And this is what would happen. Rats begin to eat of the flesh, but you can't feel it because you don't have any nerves. And so it would, it would just only make the disease a million times worse. And so then, of course, you're, you're exiled and you're put outside the city. You're, you're put in these places and, and you're not allowed to. And, and, and they couldn't feel. Let me just ask you well, while we're talking about this. Well, what is the area of your life that you've deadened and numbed to the Lord? That's become, that's become just numb to God. And yet you try to do the opposite thing. To make a better thing. How many remember Talladega Nights? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he goes, I'm going to show you. I can't feel my leg. What does he do? <laughs> and he screams. And it's like the funniest scene in the world. And guess what happens? They're like, what is their, their answer? Let's get another knife. And let's cut out that knife. 
That's how we look with our problems in our life. What, what areas have we become deadened to the Holy Spirit, to God, to his grace, to his, what, what sin, what shame, what, what disease in our life, what, what relationship, what thing in our life has caused our area to go dead or numb to the Lord? We come into the presence of God and we feel absolutely nothing. We, we, we become desensitized and numb to anything good. Let me just tell you, you're gonna not, you won't even be able to see good things in your life if you can't feel God in your life. Because the Bible says that God is, come on, help me, God is. So if God is good and all good things come from God, you, number one, won't be able to see a good thing when it hits you, and you won't be able to feel God when he shows up for you. And so you have to be able to, you have to get your sensitivity back. You have to say, Holy Spirit, this is why it's so dangerous to come into a church service or to keep coming to church or keep reading your Bible or keep praying your Bible and never have a heartfelt emotional response at any point because you have learned and taught yourself how to have a, a veil, a layer between you and God that doesn't allow him to get too close because that's too sensitive. And we deaden some of the parts of our life. We deaden some of those areas that say, as long as I don't feel it, I won't have to. Man, if they make me feel it, I'll probably have to give today. Oh, if I feel it, I'll probably have to serve. You know, they'll ask me to, you know, they do a c compelling video with some poor little child up there. I'll have to do something. And, and, and we, what we try to keep things at a distance. I wonder what areas that you've been a far off from God and you cause you to just back up. And, and, and continue to get further and further away from God. Are the things in your life growing you closer to him or are you afar off? Could you say every day, man, I feel so close to Jesus? Or are some things in your life distancing you? Because it's, it's either deadening your senses or distancing you from your Savior. And I'm here to tell you today how, how, how to get some truth to unlock this and get some healing, get into those great places where you can feel again, where you can love again, hope again, laugh again, smile again, see good things in your life again. I, I want to talk to anybody who's tired of listening to social media and how the world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's negative. Every turn you, every single person you talk to, it's something is wrong out there. I'm here to show you God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And if you can't see the goodness in your life, it's because you can't see the God in your, oh, I'm preaching right now. You, you need to be able to see the goodness and because then you'll see God. People don't want to go to church because they don't see there's anything good from it. It's because, and if they can't see any good in it, they'll never see a God in it. And you got to see the goodness and God. And that's why we got to, we got to, we got to heal some things. We got to fix some things. That's why Jesus came up to here to talk to these lepers. That's why this miracle, it's not just by chance. Now that we know that context, uh, they, they were also, because they were lepers and exiled and supposed to be in isolation, they weren't allowed to be near anybody. So then if anybody was to come close, they're actually, by law, were supposed to shout, unclean! Imagine having to do that if you've ever committed adultery. Imagine having to do that if you've ever fornicated. Imagine having to do that if you've ever sinned in your life. I'm unclean! I'm unclean! I'm not worthy! I wonder what you shout when you're in pain. Because the shout is all about what happens when, when things start to deaden and when things aren't going well and when things aren't going good. And I wonder what happens when, what, what, and, and, and don't say it in church, but because I probably need to forgive you, you God will need to forgive you some more, but what do you shout when you're frustrated? What do you shout when you burn your finger? How, let's just make it real practical, people, come on. What do you do when you stub your toe in the middle of the night? Mother of the heavenly father, right? I got to change all my words now because I have a baby in the house. <clears throat> Jiminy crickets. And I, I, I uh, oh, uh, the other night I was, uh, I was going through, uh, to go. At, it, was, it was a night. I don't consider four in the morning nighttime. I consider that like just a, an in-between hour that no one should be awake. And so like I, it's just not, I, I got up at four in the morning to help. Why? Because my wife was taking care of the baby and I was supposed to go heat up a little more milk because we need more milk. And so we have these milk packets. And then, of course, you can't heat up milk in a microwave now because obviously something's wrong with that. So then, you know, like, then we go, 
Just complaining. So then I go out and I, you have to heat it up with the wa- hot water. So then you heat it up with the hot water. You get the hot water. So then I'm heating up the little hot pet- uh, kettle. And the kettle, you know, has that spout end or whatever. And it's four in the morning. I'm exhausted. And so then I'm like, I want to check the hot water. So I was like, oh, my God. So I reach for the kettle, the end of it, to pull it off to stick my finger in and see if it was hot enough. <laughs> Right? The logic of a four in the morning sleep deprived man. And so I grab it and I literally go, (gasps) and there's a baby asleep. So I can't say anything. So that I literally, but I'm still holding on to it. And I'm like, (laughs) and I'm sitting, I drop it and I'm, I'm, I was like, (laughs) and I was just mad at myself and I'm mad at the kettle and I'm mad that I can't use a microwave and I'm mad that I can't do I'm like, this is really Emily's fault. She told me the microwave is the devil and you can't do that anymore. And I have to do it through this. And we're going to disease our baby and we don't. And I'm like, oh, and, and that's all happening in a split second, people. What, what do you shout when you're not happy? What do you shout when you're frustrated with your spouse? We do a lot. There, as 2020 and 2021, there has been a lot of shouting. And I wonder if any of it had any good undertone at all. These men could have easily said, we're in pain. Or or what about this? Y'all act like you're high and mighty. We're people too. Y'all act like y'all are so good. Who are you to say we're not good enough? They could have said a lot of things. They could have said, hey, Jesus. We need this. We need that. Hey, give me money. Could have begged for some money. But what did they shout? Have mercy on us. What were they appealing to? The goodness of God. Listen, when you shout in a frustrating, difficult moment, try to redirect who you are and what you're saying. And instead of yelling a profanity, say, God, have mercy on me in this moment. God, give me forgiveness in this moment. God, I appeal to your good nature in this moment. God, I I, I feel like I'm going through all hell right now. I hear about all kinds of things and these requirements and mandates and and people's jobs on the line and businesses on the line. Am I going to stay with the railroad or am I not going to stay with? I'm just going to be practical for a second. Let me just tell you, it's God's got it. All you need to do is say, God, have mercy on me. God, I don't understand it all. Now, I get frustrated too. I get really fr- I think it's horrible that people are losing jobs and losing careers and losing and businesses they started, family members and friends, all over a discussion, all over just a viewpoint of, I like this and I'd rather that. Listen, it's a choice. It shouldn't be a man... I, I don't have time to go into that. It should just be a simple say, oh, that's great, good, I'm glad, wonderful. And, but you shouldn't take somebody's livelihood. What we should do is even in that moment where something may be taken, is not curse them, but say, you know, it's okay. If I lose my, if I lose my job, it's all right. God will take care of me. If I lose my business, it's okay. God is good. If it doesn't go the way I think it should, that's all right. God, have mercy on me. God, I know I haven't, I didn't even deserve this job to begin with. I don't even, I don't deserve, if you thought, if at one moment you walked into your home and you thought, I deserve this. Listen, I, I don't deserve my home. I don't deserve my friends. I don't deserve, if there's anything good in your life, let me just tell you right now, as your pastor, you didn't deserve it, but God still blessed you with it. And he said, hey, I, if I gave it to you, I can keep giving to you, but I don't need you to focus on what they told you. I need you to focus on what I told you. The Bible says, who shall believe the report of the Lord? You're getting a report from every which direction. And let me just tell you, I don't need to believe their report. I need to re- believe the report of the Lord. He says, I'll never leave leave you nor forsake you. I'll turn all things for your good. I'll make you the head, not the tail. And if I be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He spoke over me purpose and destiny and love and life. And, and, and I'm here to tell somebody who keeps hearing everybody else dictate your world because words do shape your world. And if you're allowing somebody else's words to be that loud, they're shaping your world. You need to turn down the volume of some of those voices. And you need to let the shout, I love that last song, the lion. There's a lion in me. Roar. Somebody find your roar. I wish it was 2004. Find your roar in 2004, baby. Uh, Find your roar. Find your your voice. 
Some of you, you got quiet because everybody told you, don't say anything right now. You don't know how they'll take it. Hey, well, let's, let's do this. Let's change it to the conversation that Jesus had. Everything that is good, everything that is praiseworthy, everything that I am, go ahead and continue to talk about that because the goodness of God never had an expiration date, never had a, never had a, a list of when you can't, when you shouldn't, when you say. It, it's, it's good for any time and season. So I, I don't mind talking about Jesus. Why? Because he gave us the gospel, the good news. So I'm going to talk about the good news every day. And, and you ought to step out and let a shout come from you. A shout of mercy, not, a, a, not of complaining. Don't worry about it. The Bible says if you, if you have a, a burden, a petition, lay it before the Lord. We, we gave you the opportunity during prayer, and maybe you didn't come down. And you'd rather shout at them than shout about God. But that's not how we're supposed to live. And that's not how you're going to step into a place of the goodness of God in your life. So then it continues and it says, so when he saw them, he said to them, go, everybody say, go, go. show yourselves so this is point. Number two, show yourselves to the priests. And it was so, uh, and so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. That's huge. As they went, they were cleansed. I want to pause right there. Go show yourself, go show yourself. Now, this is difficult. Let me tell you why. Because they were already supposed to be isolated, and now he's telling them, you should go t- talk to the priest. Where's the priest? In the, in the synagogue. Where's the synagogue? In the city. Where's the city? With a lot of people. Where are they not supposed to go? All those places. And the last person they're supposed to talk to? The priest. They're not allowed to. And guess what would happen if they go? They get killed. So literally, their life is on the line, and I'm walking a death march, and I know if I walk this walk out, this crazy walk of faith out, I know I might die in this. And I'm here to ask you a question. Are you willing to go where it doesn't make sense? God, this doesn't make sense. That doesn't even, how does this even work? I I don't understand this. I I don't get this. Or uh, maybe they're asking me to do this, or they're asking me to do that, or I I don't really get how this is going to work out. I'm telling you, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to work out the way you're saying it's going to work out. Come on, how many have felt like this through the last year and a half? I don't feel like it's, uh, how is this working out? How am I going to get here? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And then your pastor says, oh, just believe and pray. You're crazy, man. How is that going to work? I'll just read your Bible more. I'll come to church more. How is that going to work? It got real quiet. Keep coming to church every Sunday. Oh, does that really make a difference? Oh, keep praying every day. Does that really make a difference? And let me just tell you, every walk is a step of faith. And they're walking. I wonder how many steps it takes you to walk down that road before you turn back again. Oh, I I did. I came to church for three months in a row. Nothing happened. So I decided to go back. Oh, I prayed. I prayed every day during that whole time. You told us to fast and pray. And I didn't really fast so much, but I prayed a lot. And nothing happened. I wonder how many steps it takes us to turn back and say, I I guess it's just not going to work. I wonder how many times we read our Bible. How many have ever turned to your Bible and said, you know, like you get your big, how many have a paper Bible? You have a paper Bible and you get your paper Bible out and you're like, okay, God, I'm going to read your word. You're going to show me where it's at. And you're like... Come on, you liars. Everybody's done that. Every single stinking one of you have done that. I've done that. I've been like, God, I need a word for Sunday. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, we all have those moments where we're like, what the heck? And then you go into there, and it turns into like the, the book of Revelations because you opened it like this, and it ends at the end, and you're reading the concordance, but you turn back to Revelation. And you're like, oh, Revelation. It talks about the, the four beasts and the seven crowns and the three horns. And you're like, what the heck are, is this going? I don't understand this. This is that baby talk. I'm changing my language. What the heaven are you talking about? And I ha- you, you look in here, and you're, you don't understand it. Then you're like, okay, I'll go into here. And then you go to the book of Numbers, you're like, good God, I don't get any of this. And guess what? God's waiting to say, hey, I wonder if you're going to keep pushing. I wonder if you're going to quit now because you're you're, you're one page away from a blessing. You're one page away from, you're one page away from a revelation. You're one more. If if you just keep reading, I'm telling you, my word will come to life for you, but but you're only willing to take three steps. Oh, I just want to preach about, I'm walking it out. I'm walking it out. Just like the woman who walked when her daughter was demon possessed and she went, this was a long journey and she went along the bank of the river and then she came along and got to the city. When she got to the city, 
Jesus was in an, uh, in the restaurant and he was at the restaurant and she knelt down at his table and she said, oh Lord, heal, heal my daughter. And he said, I don't give anything to dogs. He said, but even the dogs get crumbs because every step of faith was a step, a walk of saying, I'm closer to my miracle. I'm closer to my healing. I'm closer to my revelation. I'm closer to my breakthrough. I can't give up when I'm only two steps away. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, the woman with the issue of blood pushed through the crowd, pushed through the crowd. Every step was a push of faith. Every step was a walk of faith. And she pushed and pushed. I wonder when you stop when the resistance starts. And she pushed through and said, no, 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 no. I got to touch was because when she touched the hem of his garment, she was healed. But again, we're talking about the show. And let me just tell you, God's calling you to show up so he can show off. But if you never show up, he can't show off. One of the saddest scriptures in the Bible is when Jesus looked out and he said, he looked out in the crowd, it was a service, and he said, and I saw her. And when he saw her, the Bible says, woman, thou art loosed. And she, with the infirmity, totally straightened up and healed. She was healed because he saw her in the right place at the right time. But she had been coming to the same place for 18 years. I want The saddest part in, in this is I wonder how many times God has looked out into a place that you should have been with the miracle you've been praying for only to withhold it longer until you finally show up so he can finally. There, there, is, there is this dynamic where we get into even the word of where Zacchaeus goes and runs ahead of the crowd, climbs up a tree, and God, Jesus looked up and saw him and blessed his home and said, this, this day salvation has come to your home, Zacchaeus. I wonder how many times God looked up into our tree and we weren't anywhere to be found. And, our, and salvation was coming, miracle was coming, healing. The answer to your prayer you've been praying for years was coming, but you failed to show up that day. I'm here to tell you, if you love God and believe God is good, every day is a good day to show up. Every day is a good day to show up because God can show off at any moment. When you wake up on Monday, give God some praise. When you wake up on Tuesday, give God some praise. The reason that it's easier for some people to go to church every Sunday is because they worship on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I'm telling you, you got to show up so God can show off in your life. Give God a, a little bit of praise in this place. God wants you to show up. God wants you to shout. And when you shout, let me just go back there if I can for a second. Anger is an equal opportunity employer. <laughs> but so is ingratitude. You get to choose what you shout, and you get to choose when you show up. And then lastly, I want to get to this last little piece here, and I want to read you this. It says this. It says, and one of them, everybody say one. When he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God. That's where we get our word that I taught you a couple weeks ago, Tehillah. With a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. In other words, the guy who shouldn't have returned. Of all the ten, it shouldn't have been him. It should have been the other nine. That means, the statistically, that you are the one of ten that should have showed. Nine people that didn't show up today got blessed, but didn't want to give God praise. Because God gave us all 24 hours of the day and seven days a week, and it's so difficult to show up for two hours and give God praise one time. And God is calling us to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show off. I'm going to bless you. And he did. He healed all ten. Do you think that Jesus knew that nine may not come back? Nod your head, yes. He knows. He still blessed them. See, the blessing isn't hinged on whether what, what you do or not do, your healing, your mercy, your forgiveness. It, it, but our gratitude our gratitude is what takes us in a greater dimension of saying, okay, God, but we got to now turn around and not just say, God, Lord, you healed me, but God, I'm turning back around and I'm going to step into a place where I have a song. I'm going to sing it out loud. I'm going to thank God. I'm going to say it. Everybody say, say it. Say you may not be a good singer, but l let's say it out loud, right? If something is good in your life, say it. He returned just to say it with a loud voice. 
this dude healed me. Praise be to God. And he gave him praise with a loud voice and got crazy. Because listen, worship's not good until you annoy somebody near you. Right. With a loud voice. He bugged everybody. They, they had to be very, defi- they, they defined this in the scripture and they show us that this is, hey, this is how it was. And, and he shouted with a loud voice. Listen, if you're in church and you hear something good, say so. Amen. Amen. Come on, say so. If you, I, 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 it takes a while to turn a mess into a message. I'm just telling you. And I work hard to come and bring a good message every Sunday for the people of God so that you can receive something good from God. And it's so frustrating. And I don't understand when people come in here and sit quiet and never say a word. I don't get it. Because if there's worship, if it's any good, man, okay, make some noise. You hear a good point? Hallelujah. Amen, brother. Shout me down a little bit. If something is good... Say so. I don't understand when people come in here with their arms crossed and staring at me like they're dead when they're so well fed. I know the word is good. I'm just wondering if you do. Because I didn't come here. Listen, I I know it's good because I know it came from him. So I'm not worried about it. That's why I come up here and people are like, man, you're so confident. I'm like, well, it's easy when it's his stuff. I'm just kind of re-preaching what he already taught. And so I, I, I want to show you how to step into the shout, step into the show, and step into the song where you can say it out loud and say something you're thankful for. I know it sounds so simple. It's like the, the basic elementary table, right? Of learning how to live for the Lord, thanking Him. What do, what do we say? At, we're, we're all going to go to Thanksgiving dinner, and you're all going to gather around the table. And then there's one phrase that's going to be said. Does anybody know? Say the blessing. Yeah, you guys were close. Say, and remember, Christmas vacation, they want you to say the blessing, right? (laughs) I pledge allegiance. And you have that wonderful moment, right? Listen, say the blessing. The Bible teaches us to count our blessings, speak our blessings. The Bible says in Proverbs, when you receive a good word from the Lord, go to every highway and byway declaring the good work of the Lord. If you are silent about God's goodness, listen, you're silent about God. And if you're silent about God, you'll become numb to God. And if you keep becoming numb to God, you're going to become distant to God. And the reason, listen, because gratitude is not just an attitude. I'm going to tell you, I've heard that phrase. It's your attitude of gratitude, okay? That's stupid uh, because it's not. It's a decision. I choose to be grateful. It's a decision that I then practice. And listen, just like anything else, you have to practice this. You have to turn it into a muscle. You have to make this into a place of affirmation constantly that I just tell people, everybody who knows me knows I say, I love you a lot. Anybody know, Brett, you know. I say, I I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you. To the point where some people are like, should I say I love you back? Kind of sounds weird. I don't want to text that. Uh, Should I say I love you guys? I love ya, bro. Like, and and I just like, I love you. And and they're like, wow. And they're hit hard with that. Why? Because you know what? I love you. And I'd rather you know how I feel than you assume how I feel. And and you've got a lot of people in your life, especially God, wondering and hoping you feel the right way. And you need to be able to speak those feelings. You need to be able to speak that goodness. You need to to speak that appreciation. I can just talk the rest of the day about appreciation. Just appreciate each other. Turn to your neighbor and say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I, and, and tell them every day. The, the number one desire of every human on earth is affirmation. I just want to be affirmed. Every human. doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter where you come from. Every human needs it. And why are we withholding it? Why do we wait till a funeral? Why do we wait till, uh, it, let's put it like, why do we wait till a birthday? Girl, I love you. You know, and we just, then we talk about like, this girl is so bright and vibrant in my life. Right, whatever. And we talk about, we talk about all this thing. We wait to kind of describe these people and, and on one day or at their death. 
or in a moment of tragedy? Why aren't we affirming every? Why? Are, and, and we'll get to God in a second. But why aren't we affirming each other? You are God's highest creation, and if you don't see each other like that, you ought to look at everybody with a ten on their forehead, and we're like, "You're amazing! You're amazing! You're amazing! You're amazing! You're amazing!" And guess what? God doesn't run out of amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. And He keeps going. You know what? You're incredible. You're incredible. God doesn't run out of incredible. God doesn't run. People think because they're incredible, I I, I can't be. You're not robbed because of their goodness. You're good, they're good, he's good, and he doesn't run out of goodness in his life. God can pour the goodness of God over each and every one of us. And if you're not clapping for that, it's because you don't like goodness. I'm here to say, I just got through preaching, say it. Try to apply it five minutes within the gap, right? We have this opportunity to say, okay, God, you're good. You're worthy. Fake it till you make it. A lot of us were like, well, I just don't feel it, bro. Is that how you live your life, according to feelings? Your life is awful, and you make everyone else's life difficult because we all have to wait. Are they in a good mood today? How many have didn't look straight forward like you don't know who I'm talking about? But then it's like, oh, hopefully they're in a good mood, right? Uh, and then, oh, they're, they're having, hey, they're happy today. Hey, they're happy. They're happy today. We're going to have a great day today. Right, it's family, it's coworkers, it's everything. It's we we think because listen, we we want to live life with our feelings instead of tell our feelings of the goodness of God. Despite my nobody, listen, I'm tired of these phrases. I'm not okay, and that's okay. No, that's not okay. God is too good for you to remain in a not okay. Even if a storm hits your life, you can have the peace of God in your life. Even if disease hits your life, God is still good in your life. I don't have to stay not okay because God is too good in my life. Give God a really good praise in this place. Amen, amen. Oh, you just sit down. I'm talking to you. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm not preaching. But I, I, I encourage you, man, get in, the, get in the groove of God's goodness. I don't like being around negative people, and I distance them far from me. I like being around positive people who know how to be thankful and a place of gratitude. And, and if you're going to be my friend, you ought to smile a lot. If you don't know how to smile, you're not going to like me. And let me just tell you, now let's go to God, and let's close it out here. God is so gracious that he healed ten knowing one would return. God is so, God's more gracious than anybody in your life. God's more gracious than any business in your life. Let me go further. God is more gracious than those little invitations of appreciation that you get every month. You know, from APS. Those invitations from City of Flagstaff. Hey, just want to give you an opportunity. An invitation for appreciation for what we give you. And you have that opportunity to thank them. And if you don't thank them, guess what? They send another invitation of appreciation. And this one says your appreciation is past due. I'm here to tell you your praise is past due. God has done too much good in your life to not thank him for every single day that has led up to today and say, God, I owe you everything. God, you are good. God, you are faithful. God, you deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise every day of my life. With every breath I breathe, the Bible says, Paul teaches in 2 Corinthians, he says that the power of God is reserved for those who praise God gladly. The power of God. There's a lot of impotent Christians out there who think they know Christianity and they know the Bible, but yet see no fruit of it in their life. And I'm here to tell you why. It's because they lack the ability to celebrate. When you don't know how to celebrate what God has done, you'll never see what God can do. And if what he did on the cross isn't great enough to praise him every moment, smile every second, and give God praise every thought, as every fabric of your being, then nothing will be good enough in your life. No preaching will be good enough. No song will be good enough. No person will be good enough. No spouse will be good enough. There will ne never be a good enough thing in your life if what he's already done for you is not good enough to begin with your praise. Give God a little bit of praise in this place.
I need to close. I've got a little bit more, but I, I want to end here because after this, he says, you're the only one who came back? Okay. Man, where'd the other nine go? He doesn't really rebuke him. He's like, I had more for him. I wonder what else he would have done if all 10 came back. One came back and he said, arise. Your faith has made you well. Go. And he gives him a commission to go and share and talk about the goodness of God. Listen, a lot of us think that our happiness is a tie to our accumulation. Your next level of accumulation is only going to come from your next level of appreciation. If you learn to appreciate more, you'll learn to accumulate more. But God will never give you more for things you don't know how to already be thankful for. And God is saying, look, I want you to be blessed to be a blessing. But if, you, if I start blessing you and you stop blessing others, I'm going to stop the flow until you learn how to be thankful for what you already have. And God is teaching us, look, in this place of appreciation, I want to, I want to teach you a whole nother level of how to, to stand up and shout something good, how to show up and wait for me to show off. I want to show you how to sing a new song and say, you know what? I'm not a good singer. In fact, I'm terrible, but hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to praise the Lord because I don't need to be on key to sing a song to the Lord. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. And I want to pray with you. So now we'll stand together. We're going to close this service. Uh, uh, you can put your notes aside. And, and I want to pray with everybody under the sound of my voice here and online. And I want you to leave here today with a smile. If you're not happy, it's your choice. Because happiness is a choice. And the joy of the Lord when you step into that is everlasting. So some people who, who really don't have joy in their life really don't have the presence of God because the Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. So when you are lack the joy, you lack the presence. And, and, and when we lack our gratitude, we lack His power. You see how this all this comes together and ties together throughout the entire canon of Scripture? We, you, I could point out to you from beginning of Genesis all the way through Revelation where these principles are constantly are revealed throughout scripture and if you can take some of these away today and say you know what i'm gonna thank god we're in a tell me something good challenge i'm posting every day something good and i'm i'm, I'm just, yes i'm gonna try to find you on social media and tag you and get you in the challenge too so just be nervous right now that you could join with me but so many have already joined me in talking about something good i'm finally my feed is now starting to filter only good things and now I'm only seeing like good stuff, positive stuff. Yeah, some of y'all are clapping. He's like, thank you, Jesus. Because you're seeing that too. And I hope, and if maybe you're clapping because you want to see that. You need to see that. It doesn't mean just because we see all the goodness of God, we're burying our head in the sand and we don't see what's really going on. It's because we see what's going on and we deny to live in our situation. And we, we, we're not going to live there. We are going to acknowledge that it's there, but we're not going to stay there. And I'm going to stay in the goodness of God and in his presence that no matter what I face, I've still got God for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? So I stand in that place of, of thankfulness and praise. Before you go into Thanksgiving and before we go into Friendsgiving tomorrow and our Tuesday night prayer and Wednesday night service, and then, of course, next week I'm going to continue this series, Tell Me Something Good. And I hope you keep coming back if you want something good. And let me just tell you, if that's okay, if you have a, a negative disposition, you don't want to change, this is your last Sunday. And I love you. And I want you to find somewhere that you can actually change and grow. Because obviously you're not listening to me. And a good pastor isn't going to keep people and force people to learn something. I'm going to force it down. You're going to learn this whether you like it or not. No, go somewhere you get fed. Go somewhere you can actually grow. Go somewhere that fits your, your tribe. Fits, your, fits that with The Bible says, my sheep shall know my voice. If, if the voice from this house doesn't resonate with your heart, it's not your tribe. Okay? And I, I mean that in a very peaceful, joyful way receive that and as a place of peace i love it our church has four wonderful services and, and and we need people who are saying this is this is my tribe and i'm thankful because let me get to this this is the reason i brought that up because i'm thankful for you i like going to church with the people of bridge church i like preaching to guy householder you want to know why because i love guy you want to know i love i love andrew I love each and every of the people who go to this church, whether I know your name or not, because you know what? We're the same tribe, right, Gailey? Well, we're the same, we're, we have that same resonating voice and we can thank God every day for his goodness. 
I'm not going to be a good pastor if I don't teach a church how to be thankful and grateful. So I want to pray with you. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do. I pray that you'd lead us, guide us, and direct us, and that you'd speak to us. I pray right now, God, Lord, that you would help lead us into a place, God, where we can begin to shout something better. Lord, we've been shouting the wrong things, or maybe we've been so silent, we don't even shout anything. And we've become this silent believer who doesn't know how to speak up with our faith. Lord, help us to speak up with boldness, goodness, and faith. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to help us to show up Show up, Lord, when we need to be there. Show up, God, Lord, for you. Show up so you can show off in our life. Show up and walk this walk of faith out with prayer, with supplication. God, walk this walk of faith out in the Word of God, with the Holy Spirit of God. Help us to walk this walk out. And, Lord, I thank you that you're going to help us to shout, not only shout something new, but sing something new. And, Lord, sing a new song. Sing a wonderful song, a song of gratitude and appreciation to you. And be able to say it. If there's something good in our life, we ought to say it. We got a good spouse, say it. We got good kids, say it. We got a good job, say it. We got something good, say it. We got a good church, say it. We got a good, we got anything good in our life, say so. Lord, I thank you, God, that we're going to start speaking it out. And Lord, we thank you, God, in Jesus' name, for you are good. And you deserve all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give a loud, big praise. We're so glad you joined us today. If you made a spiritual decision, whether that was dedicating your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Christ, send us an email at info at rearbridge.church and let us know you made that spiritual decision. Also, if you're joining our Bridge Church family online for the first time, we have a very special gift for you. Send us an email at info at rearbridge.church to share some information on where we can send you that gift. We're so glad you joined us today, and we can't wait to see you soon. Be sure to stay connected, because we're so much better. Together. Together.